Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining Image Sensing Systems and our presentation on our Wrong Way Alerting Solution. My name is Andrew Toms. I'm the Sales Engineering Manager here at Image Sensing Systems. Um, we're going to provide a presentation that will be approximately uh, 15 to 20 minutes long. If you should have any questions uh, during the presentation, please enter them into the Q&A section on the chat uh, for the WebEx, and uh, we'll address your questions at the end of the presentation. Uh, this presentation is being recorded, uh, so it can be viewed at a later date if required. All right, so let's get moving. Um, our wrong way alerting solution. The, uh, the, the wrong way incidents are something that we see happening on a continuous ongoing basis. Um, often they end up in a horrific fatality, uh, serious injuries. Um, you know, these are things that we hear about almost on a daily basis. And according to studies that have been done, there's approximately three to 400 people who are killed each and every year due to wrong way drivers. I did a quick uh, search on Google uh, just before we started this presentation just to find out any recent events and within the past day, you know, basically we've had three events show up um, with, you know, fatalities um, as a result of them. So, you know, wrong way drivers are, are a problem that, that um, everyone's looking to find uh, solutions for. And we believe we have something that can help out in this situation. Now, why do these situations happen of wrong way drivers? Well, there's a variety of reasons. I mean, the primary one is uh, driving under the influence of whether that's alcohol or drugs. Could even be it's a poor weather situation and they can't see properly. Um, maybe you have someone who's distracted in today's uh, lifestyle. Everybody has a cell phone and even though they're not supposed to be texting, uh, they, they do pick it up and they can be distracted at that time. Um, it, it could even be uh, a design of the intersection that could be confusing to those who are not local uh, to that environment and perhaps make the wrong decision. Now, Departments of Transportation are actively looking and applying different solutions across the country. Um, and, you know, there is everything from uh, signage to lighting to some, um, new technology, um, which is where we're heading up in is on the new technology side. However, there are some obstacles that have to be considered. I mean, the, the sheer quantity of potential locations that could be out there, um, each Department of Transportation could have hundreds if not thousands of sites that need or could be addressed. Um, there could be the obstacle that, you know, the urban environment in, in the cities and et cetera limits changes to any kind of redesign point. Of course, cost is always a consideration in these things. But the bottom line is, uh, is the solution effective? Does it solve the problem that it's designed to do? Now, we're looking primarily uh, for highway, wrong way drivers. The source where these drivers come onto the highway is basically the exit ramps. So the primary uh, access point is the exit ramp where the driver makes a mistake to go on the exit ramp instead of the on-ramp. Um, and, and this has been looked at through various studies as being the key point. Now, mainline detection is also something that could be looked at. Uh, there could be people backing up on the highways, uh, making new turns on highways. It could be all sorts of uh, potential wrong-way drivers out there. Um, so we're basically looking at these two uh, applications for our solution. 
So what is our solution? What are we trying to accomplish here? Well, number one, the goals in trying to get to our solution is we want to use existing technology uh, that we already have and how can we apply that to detecting wrongway drivers. Secondly, timely of the warning of the event. Uh, we want to ensure that, you know, as close to possible of being instantaneous that the warning goes out to the driver, to oncoming drivers, to the authorities. We want the incident to be verified. Um, we don't want to be having false calls out there. We want to verify that this actually occurred and if there is some sort of action that needs to be taken, we can take it based upon the knowledge that it is a true event. And finally, we want to be considerate of the, the financial aspect and have a cost-effective solution. Going back to a, a previous slide where I said, you know, it could be hundreds if not thousands of potential locations in each and every state, um, you know, cost is definitely a concern. So our key features that we want to be able to obtain, we want everything to be simple uh, to can set up and configure. We want to provide instant notification and verification of the event. We want it to work under uh, low light performance conditions, in other words, nighttime, the primary time that these events tend to happen is in the overnight hours. We want something that's going to be highly accurate, uh, make sure that we detect everything that is a wrong way event, um, stuff that's just not restricted to the lanes of travel but to the shoulders, uh, the medians, everything that's out there. And we wanted to be able to gather pre and post video of the event so it can be analyzed at a future time. So benefits we're trying to get to is rapid visual verification. Uh, you know, we can provide a snapshot, send it out on email or text message, provide a contact closure immediately to signs to warn the driver uh, so that they can take corrective action. Um, perhaps send a pre-programmed message down to a variable message sign to warn oncoming travelers. Uh, we want to be able to detect those wrongly drivers anywhere on the main line, shoulders, ramps, gores, you name it. And we want something that can easily add on to our existing products that are out there, such as the RTMS SX300 with the high definition camera option. So our RTMS SX300 with the high definition camera uh, is capable of providing excellent video image under all uh, lighting conditions day and night. Um, we have our, our usual setup software which makes it simple to set up the device. So that's still the same, nothing changes there. What we have done to make changes here is that we are merging technologies. Our company uh, is the engineering force behind the RTMS radar detection products and the autoscope video detection. So we're looking, this is existing products that we have tremendous knowledge and background on. How can we merge these two together so that we come up with a final solution that's going to satisfy our problem here? So the video, we use our patented tracking algorithms to track vehicles across the screen. So we're incorporating these particular algorithms and customizing them specifically for use with the SX300 HD camera so that we can optimize our detection capability under all conditions that are out there. We've been testing these algorithms for many years under all sorts of uh, different conditions that are out there and, and we're able to detect under all of them. The solution is fairly simple to install. We have our RTMS product on the pole. We add an in-cabinet processor which holds our algorithms and is basically monitoring a real-time stream of the video from the RTMS unit. 
Meanwhile, the RTMS unit is still capable of sending its volume, occupancy, and speed for each and every lane of detection back to the traffic operations center, while the wrong way processor monitors the, uh, for incidents locally of wrong way drivers. And upon alert, we'll send an email or, and or text message with a snapshot of the actual event so you can have verification. And once that event is, is triggered, it will instantaneously turn on a contact closure, which can activate flashing signs in pavement lights or any other kind of device that will take a contact closure. The text or an email message will come in. You'll get a snapshot showing the vehicle at the time so you can verify this is a true event. And at that point in time, take any other kind of corrective actions that you may wish to take. At the moment that that incident is detected, we'll turn on the flashing lights uh, so that the actual driver can correct themselves, hopefully, uh, and, and turn back down the ramp. Now, we've been testing our product for some time now. And I'm going to show you a variety of uh, videos. These videos are um, primarily at our uh, various sites. Excuse me. Pardon me, sorry about that. We have various sites throughout the country and we've been detecting incidents uh, across the nation. But primarily in our Toronto-based office, we've had uh, incidents showing up on a regular basis. Some are actual incidents, and many are due to construction, but it just goes to show how we're capable of making these detections. So well, let's go through and show you some of them. In this site here, we see on the far lanes, the vehicle backing up on the uh, um, side median. And we're getting that detection as the box turns red. That's the actual detection point. The next site here, we have a, a police officer stopping a vehicle and we see him walking across and he's detected. <clears throat> we can detect small objects as well as slow moving objects. And this site here, it's construction, but we see a partially occluded vehicle still being able to be detected. Again, another partially occluded vehicle and a slow moving vehicle able to be detected. <clears throat> shadows do not bother us. As we see, the shadow is not detected, but the vehicle is. We're well aware how shadows operate with our uh, video imaging. Again, partially occluded vehicles are still detected in the bi-directional traffic. We have a lot of incidents where we're seeing a vehicle in bi-directional traffic and we're still able to detect it properly. We have a, in the next video, we have a police officer backing up on the side median and we're still able to detect them even though it's not in the main lines of detection. And we installed the site out in Colorado and we saw this wrong way driver. He knew he was going wrong way this time he was successful in entering the highway without an incident. And recently we just gathered a, a wrong way driver in uh, Minnesota. Again, bi-directional traffic and this one was daytime. So we do uh, see lots of different situations where we can get detection. So, 
Um, our testing to date, you know, we have a lot of confidence in our product to be able to actually detect wrong way incidents under various conditions and situations. Um, strictly here in our Toronto site, we have 250,000 vehicles passing by the sensor each and every day, which is like over 35 million vehicles in the past five months of our testing. And we've had hundreds of actual wrong way events. Now, the big thing to ask about is always, you know, how many false calls do you detect? Uh, well, I'm not going to tell you we're 100% perfect here. We did receive some, but on reviewing the video of those false calls, we were able to make changes to our detection zone, which have uh, now brought that false calls to near zero, which is the goal we're trying to obtain. We don't want our products to go out there and provide an endless false calls. It takes away from the accuracy of the system. So, how many events actually occur? Well, if you're not monitoring the sites, you don't really know. The only time you know what happens really is if an event occurs and it ends up in a, an accident or a fatality. But if you are able to monitor the site and determine that this site has a high propensity of wrong way drivers, then perhaps something else can be done to that site to make it better. So our product can provide all those incidents, whether it ends up in an accident or not, we can provide that information to you. So, I'm going to give you a little demonstration of the software that we have set up here. I have something just set up in my office, just to give you a little example. So let's just bring it up on the screen here. Okay. So we'll go back to the main screen here. When you're connected to our software, our supervisor software, it will search for all the devices on your network. At this moment in time, I have one device connected on my network here in uh, Toronto. And we'll just go into that to kind of show you how it looks like. Now I just have it pointed out my window here, uh, the uh, um, exit to the parking lot. Just to give you an example of how it looks. All we're really doing is we're just putting a little zone um, up on the um, screen where we want the detection to happen. The arrow basically is the direction of positive traffic. So anything going in the direction of the arrow is good. Anything going in the opposite direction is a wrong way event. And to change it, we just rotate it around. So that's all we do to place on the zone. Save it, and then we can uh, set up uh, for our wrong way. On the side there, we can see we can name it whatever we wish to call it, eastbound, westbound, northbound, I-5, I-10, uh, whatever you wish to call it. So when that email or text message is sent, it will show this uh, telling you exactly what's happened. Now in our parking lot here, I have had some incidents occur because I've set it up so everybody who exits the parking lot will send me um, uh, an incident. And we see here we got a car exiting and we picked him up. And we'll go down and we can, every vehicle we're picking it up as it's exiting the parking lot. Uh, I can also download the video of this. So we gather 15 seconds of buffered video all the time, and when an incident occurs, we store that pre that, that buffered 15 seconds and we record for another 15 seconds. So you have a total of 30 seconds of video that you can download 
and have a look at at a later time uh, to analyze what has actually happened. The device itself is IP based. All you have to do is you just have to punch in the IP addresses uh, of the network that it's going into. We also have an I.O. module, which is IP based, and that is what will provide the contact closures out uh, to your signs. You can also set up for your notification. In other words, you can set up for your email, text message, and et cetera. And you can add in multiple uh, destinations here. So it's a fairly simple software to go around and, and set up. All right, so what does our system comprise of? It comprises of the RTMS SX300 unit with the high definition camera. We have the wrong way processor box, which has all the algorithms on board and analyzes the real time stream coming from the unit. Um, that can have an IO module connected to it, which will provide uh, contact closure outputs to turn on flashing signs or uh, activate a variable message sign. And we provide the power supplies for all this. The actual flashing lights and signs and et cetera are all things that can be provided through our distribution network um, to add into the system. Um, so, you know, we can provide a complete package through our distribution network. So at this time, I want to um, ask if there is any uh, questions uh, that, have, that you have that you can enter them in onto the chat section or the Q&A section and then uh, I'll do my best to answer any and all questions that you have. Okay. According to our organizer, we do have a lot of questions here. Give me a minute to get those questions up. Okay, so we have one question that came in that says, what's your opinion on using microwave detection versus CCTV and software detection? So what our um, approach on this is that we use microwave vehicle detection for mainline detection already. It does provide a very highly accurate uh, detection um, for highways and, and is used uh, throughout the nation and we get a very excellent detection rate on it. Adding in the camera offers us to give um, both the high accuracy and, and low false calls of wrong way events. Um, going in with a CCTV for that, it uh, tends to be farther distance away, constantly moving, more difficult um, to get quality wrong way events and, and also to lower your um, false call detection. So 
the next question we have is what kind of accuracy does the sensor provide? What is the percentage of false calls due to weather, rain, and et cetera? Okay, so like I said, we did have a couple of false calls come up on our sensor um, based after 35 million vehicles coming by. You know, do you base that on the actual vehicles that this is a false call percentage? If that's the case, then we're 99.9999% accurate. Um, yes, we're not going to be perfect. Um, we um, have seen um, good quality detection in rain and in snow. Um, you know, that, that's all I can really comment on that. Um, yes, it is tends to be a good system. Okay, next one is, can the SX300 differentiate opposing lanes accurately at partial cloverleaf and trumpet ramps without spillover? Um, okay, I'm not sure <coughs> what this question, but I'll take a shot. So, the RTMS can differentiate lane detection um, on opposing lanes um, on its 12 lanes of detection. That's not a problem. The wrong way device, we have the ability to detect up to 150 feet away from the detector for wrong way. We cannot go the full 250 feet of the RTMS device because then the image becomes too small and makes it challenging to be accurate under those situations. <clears throat> So we have at uh, some installations where if the pole is, is situated correctly, we can do the, both the uh, exit ramp and the main lines accurately. But that really depends on the design of that ramp situation. Okay, next. Can the SX300 interface with SunGuide? We do have an option uh, for that. Uh, that we can interface with SunGuide. So yes, that, that, that is an option we have available. Next question, is this alert being delivered to navigation devices? Um, we do not provide that direct connection. Um, but you know, if we're given the alert to the DOT and the DOT can do that or upload it, then yes, I guess that's a possibility. Uh, next, CFX is working with TAPCO in Milwaukee for the deployment in Central Florida. What is the timeline to beta test in Central Florida? Uh, the product is uh, basically released um, in the new year for delivery, so timeline is uh, right away. Okay, what is the percentage of spillover and or crosstalk from the drawn in detection zones? So this is where we had some false calls in our Toronto office based upon uh, the drawing of the zone. We found, you know, we had to be precise so that we captured the right area that we were looking at uh, because if you do have it, where you got bi-directional traffic and you didn't set up the zone properly, you could get the opposite flow of traffic picking up on your um, uh, wrong way device. Uh, so yeah, setup is like anything else, you know, if it's a quality setup, you'll have quality results. Okay, do you have stats on missed calls? So what we did here in our, um, uh, Toronto site, since we were um, having our highway closed during evenings for construction and we were able to see wrong way events on a consistent basis due to the construction vehicles, we recorded um, all through the night the video and we reviewed the video. and. We never missed one wrong way uh, detection during our testing there. 
Uh, I don't have any other kind of uh, data that we can go by uh, for that outside of this is this is something that we had available to us. Okay, do you have any details on the percentage of turnarounds due to the countermeasures? Um, no, I do not. You have to have a system in place in order to um, assess that. Uh, once it's in place and is turning on the flashing lights to the countermeasures, so to speak, then we can be able to monitor that. But we, we don't have um, those kind of systems installed yet. Uh, next question, how much storage space is available on the server? Do you receive notice if the storage is nearing capacity? So we have uh, four gigabytes of storage. Um, at the highest resolution, it's uh, for every 30 second video, it's about 17 megs. Um, we were running this for um, many months in Toronto. And when we had literally, you know, 50 to 60 wrong way events on each and every night, um, we never got it up to capacity. Now the device does have an overwrite uh, feature built into it. Um, and no, we won't give a capacity notification on that. Okay, what kind of cybersecurity features exist in the software to avoid hackers manipulating the zones? Um, outside of your own uh, network firewall and connection on it, uh, we don't have anything extra in our system. Are email and text the only type of notifications? Is there an audible alarm function? Right now, our notifications are strictly email and or text message and contact closure. Um, so if the contact closure was connected to a device to provide an audible alarm inside a DOT TMC or something like that, um, that's what we have available today. Is solar power an option for remotely located systems where AC power is not available? Uh, yes. The RTMS um, already runs on solar power throughout the nation, adding in um, our wrong way processor device. Um, and usually there's always a cell modem located there too. Uh, this is not a, uh, an obstacle for us. Uh, it's a minor increase of total power draw. Uh, next, does speed impact the accuracy of the system? Um, so we've been testing this under uh, basically single digit uh, mile per hour speeds up to probably 80 mile per hour speeds. And we have not noticed any um, issues or, or, or problems with regard to the speed of, of units coming in. We've, we've gone through extreme congestion environments uh, to your middle of the night where you tend to have your high speed out there. Um, so we, we haven't noticed anything. Has the system been tested in highly urbanized area? And if so, what issues came up? Well, I consider our system here in Toronto a highly urbanized area. You know, when you got a quarter million cars passing by per day and you got extreme congestion happening. And I haven't noticed any issues with regards to that kind of situation of volume of traffic or congestion, if that's what's meant by that question. Um, so yeah, no, no issues there. Okay, software is web-based cloud software, yes. Um, the the software, our supervisor software, is is not web based. Um, that's something that would sit on a on a PC back of the TMC, uh, so you can get in and configure the system. Uh, that's the only real need of the software is for the configuring of the system. Everything else, uh, um, you know, once it's up and running, it's it, it just self self running. 
Uh, would you, can you mount the detectors on the side of the road or overhead? Um, typically, uh, we only mount our products on the side of the road. We do not do overhead. Uh, so we're, we're side fired. Um, you know, the plan is, if at all possible, you know, you can still use the RTMS for traffic, volume, occupancy, and speed of your main lines. And uh, if possible, you can use the video to monitor your exit ramps and the main lines. Where is the video stored? Do you keep it on a cloud server uh, that ISS maintains? If so, what is the monthly cost for storing this video? The video is stored on the actual processor device, which is a hardware device that goes in the cabinet at the base of the pole. And that's accessed through your local area network, um, and you, you download it from there. It is not uh, cloud-based. How many lanes can it detect in one setup, and can it detect both directions with one setup? So our total detection distance is 150 feet on the video side of it for our wrong way detection. So as many lanes that can fit into the 150 feet we can detect. The um, bi-directional traffic is, again, not an issue for us as long as we set it up so that we're not um, crossing over um, cars from adjacent uh, directions of traffic. Can the system be used to simultaneously count traffic? Yes. Uh, the RTMS traffic detector, uh, his main function is to count vehicles in on a per lane basis. Um, so we'll give uh, volume occupancy, speed, classification, headway gap, and et cetera on a per lane basis for up to 12 lanes of traffic. Uh, it won't work with the Floyd G4 system, I assume. Uh, that is correct. It's optimized for the high-definition camera inside the SX300 product. Are all the system components hardened and suitable for extreme climates? Yes, we've designed everything to be um, set out in the field and pass all the tests that are required so that it does the full temperature uh, environments, everything that's out there. So we do ensure that. <laughs> Have you run into issues of false calls due to animals or birds? Do you have the ability to decrease the sensitivity to mitigate these false calls? Um, I thought I might see something like that. I haven't yet. It is possible that, you know, you get an object go coming across the screen in the opposite direction that you will detect it as, a, as an actual wrong way. Um, there is um, no sensitivity setting inside the wrong way processor to um, change that setting. Um, like in my example in the presentation, we saw that person walking across the screen and we, and we picked up the person. Um, I would presume that a small bird, it would be too small for us to see, but, but, but I'm not anticipating that. Yeah. Okay. What? the accuracy during heavy fog, smoke, or other weather conditions that block sight. Um, so, like I said, we do have a limited distance that we're going to see with our camera. Um, if it is uh, such a, a dense um, situation, you know, getting the farther distances could occlude it. Um, you know, the, that can be a limitation. Primarily what we're looking at is the exit ramp, which is usually within 20, 30 feet of the detector. And even under uh, foggy conditions, uh, we're still able to see that quite well and get, get pretty good accuracy. Uh, but the farther you go, maybe the main lines will be occluded under those types of situations. Is there a way to get the camera to view a parallel view instead of a perpendicular view? to the road to get a license plate. 
No, um, we're, we're, we're not designed for that uh, kind of situation. Uh, again, we want to stay as a side fire device has been optimized for detecting uh, vehicles from a side fire point of view. Uh, what is the mounting height required uh, for the camera? It doesn't have to be over the lane. Uh, typically, our mounting heights for our product run between 17 up to 40 feet above ground, depending on how far back it is from the first lane of detection. Um, it, it does not have to be over top of the lane. Um, that is not a requirement. If you have an existing SX300 HD cam set up and working, will you need to modify its configuration to work with the wrong way processor? The only thing that you need to modify is in the video settings. There is a specific tick box to optimize the video settings for wrong way processor. Otherwise, there's nothing else to configure on it. That real time stream will come out um, to our wrong way processor device. Uh, based upon the optimized video settings uh, that are meant for ideal use. What is the life expectancy of the processor? Um, well, on the processor itself, I mean, it comes with a, our standard warranty on it uh, of, of one year. Um, I mean, it's, it's designed uh, for field operation under extended uh, temperature conditions. Uh, vibe and shock and et cetera, we anticipate it to, to be out there for many years. I don't have a, a MTBF on it as of today. I can look into that. How good is the image quality during the night? Okay, on some of my examples I've shown you with our shots here in Toronto, I think they're outstanding at nighttime. Uh, the one um, site I had from Colorado, when I had it on the lowest possible resolution capability with no lights, I was still able to see the car quite well. So I never really have seen any issues in our image quality during the nighttime. On average, how often do detectors need to be calibrated or replaced? Um, the Units are designed for no maintenance. Uh, once they're set up in the field, they, they do not need to be recalibrated or replaced. Um, they're not, you know, no maintenance, no cleaning of the lenses. Nothing like that is required. Uh, again, I'll say the units that we've been testing here, you know, the physical unit with the camera has been out in the field for two years, and we've never done anything to the physical lens of that out there, so uh, no real need. How does the radar factor into the processing or is it done strictly off the video? Uh, the radar is done for vehicle detection on a lane by lane basis. Uh, the video is what runs the wrong way processors. Uh, no infrared low light illumination, I assume. Yes, that is correct. No infrared low light illumination. Let's see if we got any other questions. All right, that appears to be all the questions that we have. Um, I appreciate everybody's uh, participation in our uh, presentation today. If you do have any other presenta uh, questions on the presentation, you know, please send them in to our email um, uh, at Image Sensing, and we'll do our best to answer each and every one of them that you have. Uh, again, thank you for your time. And um, everyone have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.